morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5. You're on Friday, April 22nd, 2016. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by our Alex Gleitman. Alex, I'm going to ask you a lot of recruiting questions today. Let's start with Chase Young. What is the latest with Chase Young? Yeah, so, I mean, it, things are kind of status quo from last week with Chase. Uh, he was supposed to visit Ohio State for the spring game last weekend. Just couldn't make it out uh, last minute. But he, he let the Ohio State staff know uh, a day or two before that he wasn't going to be able to come and make the trip from Maryland uh, to Ohio State. Um, and, you know, he went to the Maryland spring game, which some people had a little cause for concern. But I don't think it's anything to see. As Dan Rubin has said many a times, he knows the DMV area very well. Chase Young's high school is literally, I think Dan said, a mile and a half or, or two miles uh, from Maryland's campus, so it, it's it's very easy for him. It's almost as easy as Antoine Simmons going to Michigan, which is literally across the street, the big house uh, for him. Um, so I wouldn't look too much into it. The way I see it, it's an Ohio State Maryland battle. You have USC and Alabama in there as well. Right now, from everything I'm hearing from the Maryland side, from the Chase Young side, from the Ohio State side, I think the Buckeyes do lead at this point. But there is a comfort level of staying close to home with DJ Durkin and his staff. The more he goes there, again, while it's easy to go there, the more he goes there, the more he gets comfortable and builds relationships with that staff, and it's harder to say no to them at the end of the process. But I think this one's going to go on for a while. I think official visits are going to happen. But right now, I think Ohio State sits in a pretty good place for Chase Young. That's good news for the Buckeyes. Um, Sticking with uh, the weak side defensive end spot, Chase Young is the number four Weak side defensive end in the country, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. The number one weak side defensive end is Joshua Kando from IMG. Uh, what's the latest with Kando, Alex? Yeah, I was someone who I, I just never saw Josh Kando to Ohio State. I still don't see it, and I don't think it's going to happen, even though uh, Ohio State is in the top four, uh, along with uh, Penn State, Notre Dame, and Michigan. Surprisingly, no Maryland in there. Some people think that's a troll job, that he didn't include Maryland. All the, all the writers saying he was going to commit to Maryland soon. He doesn't include him in a top four, and then he would commit to them. But uh, as Steve Wolfong said yesterday, I think if by the middle of next week, if he's not a, a turp by then, I think you have to believe the top four, and, which gives Ohio State a shot. Um, my whole thing is Kane Doe hasn't visited Ohio State yet. He hasn't been to Columbus. Uh, I'm not sure he's been to Ann Arbor either. I know he was just recently at Notre Dame and Penn State uh, over his spring break or whatnot, as well as Maryland. Uh, so to me, to make the effort to go to South Bend uh, and not come to Columbus, uh, that, that just speaks volumes to me, no matter what he said, no matter how close he is to Malik Barrow, to Marcus Williamson, to Isaiah Pryor, or his teammates at IMG. Uh, so so for me right now, I see Ohio State uh, out of that. If that top four is legit, I see them running third, I think, to Notre Dame and Penn State right now. Uh, but, again, you know, if the top four is legit, I, I think there's going to be official visits. I think there's going to be opportunity for visits in the summer. And this one could go the whole way to signing day. So there's an opportunity for Ohio State to be there. But right now I think Ohio State likes Chase Young more than they like Joshua Kando from what I've heard. And I think uh, you're seeing them make Young more of a priority because I think they, they, they not only like him more, but they feel that there's a better chance to land Young than there is Kando. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, switching to the offensive side of the ball, Number two running back in the country, Cam Akers, Clinton, Mississippi. And I know he told our Bill Curlick a couple days ago, quote, I love Ohio State. But I feel like he loves a lot of southern schools as well. I think Ohio State's the only northern school really on his list. You look at the crystal ball, 55% to Ole Miss, 18% Georgia, Tennessee's in the mix, Alabama, Mississippi State. You don't see much Ohio State in the crystal ball. But a lot of times the crystal ball is outdated or might not be all that accurate. Uh, what's the latest with Cam Akers? Yeah, from, from talking to people inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, I mean, there's there's a cautious optimism that they're going to land either Cam Akers or Najee Harris, um, you know, two of the two the, the number one and number two running backs in America. Um, so they, they certainly think they're going to land one of them. Uh, Akers had a great visit to Ohio State. It wasn't his first time coming on his own dime. He came last year uh, for Friday Night Lights. I think he plans to come again this summer and then, for an official visit. So a lot of good things happening with Ohio State and Cam Akers. I think it's a little too early to say where he's going. I know a lot of those crystal balls for Ole Miss came in immediately after he decommitted from Alabama. People felt he would just stay home, go to Ole Miss. But I'm hearing it's going to be Ohio State, Ole Miss, and Tennessee. I think Georgia and Alabama would probably round out a top five if Cam were to name one today. But he was already committed to Alabama. How often do you see a kid that was committed to a school – 
uh, decommit and then end up recommitting to that school. It does happen. Uh, you see Mickey Mitchell in basketball uh, and, and a couple, uh, a number of other uh, prospects across, you know, both football and basketball. But it doesn't happen often. So I personally don't see him going to Alabama. Uh, I don't see him. I don't think he ends up at Georgia, but that is a possibility. I see this as an Ohio State, Tennessee, and Ole Miss battle. And right now I actually think Cam might be favoring Ohio State and Tennessee from what I'm hearing. But, you know, again, Mississippi's home for him, so the Rebels, uh, you know, they've done a great job on the recruiting trail, and, and so they're certainly in the mix as well. Let's talk some quarterback. with Texas, starting with Kellen Mond, number five dual threat quarterback in the country out of IMG. Now, he tells us, he told Bill Curl, at quote, Urban Meyer told him, I'm their guy. I'm their guy for the 2017 class. Um, is that the same thing you're hearing, that he's he's their number one target at the quarterback position, just – what else do you want to say about Kellen Mond? Uh, personally, I don't, I don't buy that. Uh, you know, I, I have heard from – I mean, Kellen said that, and I've, I've heard from, from sources in Texas that uh, prior to the trip that Urban Meyer was very high on Kellen Mond. I've also heard from Ohio State sources that there's kind of mixed feelings um, and they, that they want, would like to evaluate him more. Kellen, Kellen told me he got an offer on the visit, um, whether he misinterpreted what Urban said, and he took that as – Ohio State was offering, I don't know, because, again, some sources on the Ohio State side for me are telling me uh, it's kind of murky as to whether he has an offer or not or a committable offer uh, at that. So I think Kellen Mond is a guy they like and a guy they're going to monitor moving forward. Uh, but, you know, if Danny Clark does end up staying in the class, I think they're, they're only going to uh, take another elite quarterback. And do they think Kellen Mond is an elite quarterback? I'm not sure right now. Uh, so uh, I think Urban Meyer is doing his best sales pitch to Kellen should he decide that, that Kellen is the guy he wants. But personally, I think Ohio State has Tate Martell on their board uh, a little bit higher right now. Good segue. The next guy I was going to ask you about, Tate Martell, number one dual threat quarterback in the country out of Las Vegas. Bishop Gorman, of course, high school teammates with Buckeye commit Haskell Garrett. Um, are the Buckeyes a little bit of a long shot here? or just uh, What's the latest with uh, Tate Martell? I would have Ohio State running uh, number two right now uh, to Texas A&M where he's committed. I, I think after the visit, uh, there's a lot of people who thought it went very well. Uh, Tate was very high in Ohio State. Uh, obviously, if, if the Bucks can land Ty John Lindsay, who, who Tate has lived with uh, the last few years before Ty John moved back to California, uh, I think that would bode well for Ohio State. That said, I think a lot that a lot will. Uh, be determined on how things play out with the Aggies. I mean, the opportunity for playing time there is tremendous, and Tate fits that system very well. They think he could kind of be not off the field, but on the field, their next Johnny Manziel um, down there at the College Station. But Kevin Sumlin's future is, is kind of up in the air. I mean, Texas A&M has kind of been on a downward spiral the last couple of years, a lot of staff turnover. Um, there's a lot of questions about Sumlin himself. So we'll see how that plays out. I think that one's kind of – kind of go the distance or at least into January. Tate said he's going to take all of his official visits. Um, I believe one of those, at, at this point, obviously things could change over the next few months, will be to Ohio State. Uh, so I think the Buckeyes are in a good spot and, and where they, I guess the best way to put it is they're where they need to be right now in the Tate Martell sweepstakes. It's a marathon, not a sprint uh, for this kid's recruitment. All right, Danny Clark, you're going to love this. I'm going to put you on the spot. Danny Clark, Yes or no, will he be in Ohio State's 2017 class when it's all said and done? Uh, as things stand today, I'm still going to say yes. I think right now there's a lot of turmoil in the situation, and it's trending toward a direction where the answer to that question will be no. But as of today, from everything I know, uh, I still think Danny Clark will be a Buckeye as of April 22nd, 2016. We're going to have to bet a Chipotle burrito, my friend. Hold the E. coli. I'm going to say no. Danny Clark will not be in this class. Uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, that's my answer. Okay, real quick, uh, switching to basketball, last topic here. Um, I think Buckeye fans all knew this was happening, but it was, became official yesterday. Chris Gent is returning to be an assistant coach on Thad Mata's staff. I absolutely love this. I'm sure you do, too. You wrote the story yesterday. Talk about Chris Gent coming back to Ohio State. Yeah, I think this is a home run higher and the first step in Thad Mata, well, I guess depending on your views of the program at this time, but for those who feel that the program is trending in a downward direction, which I don't think anyone can deny, I think it's the first step in changing that and, and, and turning the, turning things on their head, 
um, doing a 180 and, and putting this thing back in the right direction. So Chris Kent, uh, you know, from everything I know and everything I've been told, he was a key asset uh, under, uh, you know, for the couple of years he was at Ohio State in terms of player development and demanding excellence every single day in practice, in workouts, whatever that may be. He's a guy who was in the NBA as a player, won a national championship with the Houston Rockets. Uh, he's been around the block. He's been a coach. He's been a head coach in the NBA. He's been a head coach in the NBA. Uh, DL this past year. So he, he, he's been around guys at all levels. He understands what it takes to be great, to be excellent. And I think, you know, that kind of, that, that aura kind of, uh, reflects off him every single day when he's in the building around the guys. And I think you really saw the Ohio State offense and the program kind of take a turn for the worse after Chris departed, uh, and Greg Paulus got to, uh, promoted into his role of quote unquote being the offensive coordinator. Um, so I think Chris kind of taking back those reins, taking over the offense, and just being around the guys every single day, it's going to be an excellent thing for Ohio State. Um, you know, on the recruiting front, I'm not sure how much it will bring. From what I've heard, Chris, that's the part of the college game that he didn't love, the recruiting part. Um, but he still has a lot to sell from his experience as a player. Both at Ohio State, people forget that, you know, he, he played and was a very scrappy, solid player at Ohio State. And in the pros, overseas, whatever. Um, he, he can sell all that to, to a recruit and his love for Ohio State and the state of Ohio. So I think this is just, again, not even a home run, a grand slam hire for Ohio State, and it, it's, it's a great thing Chris Jens back. I completely agree. Great wisdom, as always, from our Alex Gleitman. Thank you very much, Alex. Thanks to the listeners for tuning into the show. I appreciate it. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Let's hear some Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. <laughs>